Hey guys, just wanted to pop in and let you guys know that I'm currently streaming My Teenage Girl on Patreon. Oh, yo, look at that. What the, what the heck? Wow. That's crazy. Do you see that dance break at the end? Like, what the heck was yeah. that? Yeah. <gasps> So if you'd like to watch My Teenage Girl with me and my team, then be sure to check out my Patreon today. Links will be in the description. With Girls Planet 999 and Street Woman Fighter coming to an end, and shows like Island 2 and My Teenage Girl about to air, it seems like survival show season is in full bloom once again. And we all know how it goes, where survival shows air, tempers flare. Whether it's disagreements over the final results, cancelling controversial contestants, or criticizing TV stations for evil editing, which is something that I've admittedly been guilty of myself. Then it suddenly became too much greed. What? There was no greed. It seems like these shows have become a hot topic of discussion, or more specifically, heated discussions amongst many netizens recently. But you know, all this talk suddenly got me thinking of another long-forgotten survival show called Kara Project. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have watched it or heard of it, but if you haven't, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Because this show aired almost a decade ago, and it wasn't especially popular, nor did it cause any scandals during its airing. So why are we talking about it, you might be asking? Well, whilst the show itself was indeed pretty unremarkable, it was the terrible events that happened to every single contestant after the show that truly makes Kara Project one of the most tragic pieces of reality TV to ever exist. And the worst part is, these effects can still be felt today. So let's dive straight into the unbelievable story of Kara Project. K-pop's unluckiest surviving show. So I'm sure many of you have heard of Kara, a second generation girl group whose most famous lineup consisted of members Gyuri, Seungyeon, Hara, Nicole, and Jiyoung. The group debuted in 2006 under DSP Media and went on to become one of the top K-pop girl groups in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Obviously, they dominated the charts in Korea with their hit songs such as Mr, Step, and Lupin. But they were perhaps even more popular in Japan, where till this day, even years after their disbanded, they remain the fifth best-selling K-pop artist of all time. So that just goes to show how massively successful they were. Unfortunately though, they kind of fell victim to the 7 year curse in 2014, when two of the members, Nicole and Ji Young, left the group after choosing to not renew their contracts with DSP Media. With almost half the lineup gone, DSP Media decided that they needed to add a new member to Kara, and hence Kara Project was born. Kara Project was a survival show that aired from 27th of May to 1st of July 2014, where seven promising DSP media trainees, known as Baby Kara members, battled it out to become Kara's newest member. So here goes a brief introduction of the seven Baby Kara members. The oldest contestant was 22-year-old An So Jin, who had previously competed in Superstar K1 before becoming a trainee at DSP Media for five years. Next was 20-year-old Ha Young Ji, who was previously a trainee at Core Contents Media and Key East Entertainment before finally joining DSP Media. Then there were the 18-year-olds Cho Shi Yoon, Yoon Chae Kyung, and Jeon So Min, who were all members of DSP's Japanese girl group Puretti. Unfortunately, the group didn't do too well and ended up disbanding earlier in 2014, which led these members to join Kara Project in order to get another chance to debut. Another contestant was 17-year-old Kim Chae-won, who was known for her soulful voice. She was actually the newest trainee out of all of the contestants on this show, having joined DSP Media just a few months ago. 
And last but not least was the youngest contestant, 16 year old Son Yuji, who had previously competed on K pop Star 2 and was known for her dancing skills. So those were the contestants. Now, as for the show, the only way that I can really describe Kara Project was that it was definitely a very basic, no frills, bare bones K-pop survival show, especially when compared to the survival shows that we see today. Every episode, the contestants would just practice and perform a different Kara song, the judges would give their feedback, and that was literally it. I mean, for better or for worse, there was absolutely no drama, no no filler, and there were certainly no long and drawn out ranking announcements. I mean, the first elimination didn't even take place until the second last episode. So yeah, definitely very different from the survival shows of today. Anyways, in the end, despite skipping 2 out of the 5 evaluations due to injury, Youngji proved to be the most popular contestant and was declared the winner of the show. Youngji, let's do me that! She did it! Her years of training had paid off and her dreams were finally coming true. She was about to embark on a long and successful career with Kara. As the finale drew to a close, all the contestants gathered on stage to congratulate Youngji and everyone celebrated as she officially became Kara's fourth member. It seemed like such a happy ending to an unremarkable and innocuous survival show. Little could anyone have predicted the terrible fate that would await each and every one of these contestants. Now before I jump into everything, I would suggest you sit tight and grab yourself a snack because we have a lot to get through. But what if you don't have any snacks at home? Well then, maybe it's time you grab yourself a soul box. Soul Box is a monthly subscription box packed to the brim with goodies from Korea, ranging from lifestyle products and K-pop merchandise to a ton of unique Korean snacks, enough to last you till your next Soul Box arrives, so you'll never run out of snacks ever again. The box also comes with an informative magazine that tells you all about different festivals and tourist attractions in Korea. So if you'd like to try out this amazing box for yourself, then be sure to check out Soul Box's website, which I'll be linking in the description down below. And don't forget to use code PLUPY15 for 15% off. Huge thanks to Soul Box for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, let's jump straight back into this story. So I'm just going to be talking about what happened to each of these contestants one by one in order of their rankings. We're going to be starting off with Yuji who came in 7th place and ending with the winner Youngji. Okay, so in 7th place, we have the youngest contestant Yuji. After getting eliminated from the show, she left DSP Media and joined GH Entertainment, debuting in their girl group Apple B in 2017. Unfortunately, Apple B wasn't very successful and and just shortly after their debut, some of the members left the group, resulting in the group's disbandment. The remaining members, which included Yuji, then competed on the show The Unit, but none of them made it far, with Yuji coming in at 59th place. After the show, Yuji and the remaining contestants then remained in GH Entertainment, and in 2019, they finally got the chance to re-debut as a new group called Third Eye. Then just two months ago, Third Eye combined with B.I.G., a boy group who's also under G.H. Entertainment, and together they formed a co-ed group called Triple Seven. Though none of their songs have charted, Third Eye and Triple Seven do seem to be garnering some attention online, so hopefully this signifies a new start for Yuji. Now obviously, Yuji has had a pretty difficult time in the industry so far, but compared to the other Baby Kara contestants, she actually managed to make it out relatively unscathed. And Shi Yoon, who came in 6th place for instance, has had an even harder time finding success. After Kara Project, Shi Yoon actually remained in DSP Media, and in 2016, she even competed in Season 1 of Produce 101. Unfortunately though, she didn't really make it that far into the competition and ended up getting eliminated in 41st place. 
After her elimination, she left DSP Media to pursue acting, which was actually something that she had expressed interest in even during her time on Kara Project. Sadly though, it seems like her acting career hasn't really taken off, and she has only managed to secure roles as minor characters in two projects since her departure from DSP. Meanwhile, the next three contestants, Che Kyung, Che Won, and So Min, all crossed paths once again when they became members of DSP's next girl group, April. To be more specific, when April initially debuted in 2015, only Che Won and So Min were part of the lineup. They debuted with the song Dream Candy, which had a very innocent and youthful concept. While Che Won fit the concept perfectly, the same couldn't be said about So Min. I mean, the poor girl had always been known for her cool and chic image, and April's concept couldn't have been any more different. This was simply not what So Min had envisioned herself doing. And so, less than a year after her debut, she actually withdrew from the group, stating outright that she was not comfortable with April's concept. With So Min out, the remaining five members then continued their promotions, until just a year later when another member Hyunju also left the group. Now keep Hyunju in mind because she's gonna come back into this story later. But basically, at this point, with two members gone and the group struggling to gain popularity, DSP decided that they needed to add some new members to the group. And this is when Che Kyung comes in. You see, Che Kyung had done numerous activities since her time on Baby Kara. In 2016, she actually also participated in Produce 101 alongside Shi Yoon, where she managed to come in an impressive 16. And then after the show, she also joined temporary groups IBI and CIVA. All of this stage experience made her the perfect candidate for April. And so in 2017, she along with another DSP trainee, Rachel, were officially added to the group. Meanwhile, So Min re-debuted in DSP's new group, CARD, in late 2016. CARD is a co-ed group with a mature concept, which was just so much more in line with So Min's personality. And you could tell that she enjoyed performing on stage with CARD so much more. And to make things even better, CARD ended up gaining unexpected success internationally and quickly became one of K-pop's most successful co-ed groups. So at this point, things were looking pretty good. So Min was obviously doing well with her group card, while Che Won and Che Kyung continued promoting with April. And it looked like these three baby Kara members were going to have long-lasting and stable careers. That was until the April bullying scandal hit the news. Remember Hyunju, the other member who left April? When another member Hyunju also left the group, now keep Hyunju in mind because she's gonna come back into this story later. Well, in February of 2021, her brother came out with bombshell allegations that Hyunju had actually left the group due to bullying. Now, if you watched my previous video, you will know how quick netizens are to cancel suspected bullies. And so, naturally, April was majorly cancelled. Despite no longer being a part of April, So Min couldn't escape the scandal, as netizens pointed out that she had been in the group when Hyunju was still a member. And even Che Kyung, who only joined the group after Hyunju had already left and therefore couldn't have been involved, was likewise lumped in with the other April members and cancelled. Obviously, DSP Media and the April members themselves have vehemently denied all the accusations. In fact, they've been releasing statements, filing lawsuits, and doing interviews all in an attempt to clear their name, but to no avail. Since the scandal, So Min, Che Won, and Che Kyung have continued to face immense backlash and criticism from the public. And with no resolution in sight, the future is definitely looking pretty uncertain for these three baby Kara members. But okay, at least they have a future to worry about, because sadly, the same can't even be said for the next contestant, Sojin, who came in second place. As the oldest contestant on the show, Sojin's main concern was most definitely her age. She was aware that the average age of debut was around 18 to 19 years old, and as a 22-year-old, Sojin was beginning to feel a real sense of urgency. 
She felt like if she didn't make the cut for Kara this time, she was unlikely to ever debut, as she was probably going to be too old for any of DSP's future groups. Additionally, she had more, I guess you could say, adult concerns. For instance, she saw her friends getting internships and building up their careers while she was still a trainee. And I guess she felt like she was kind of falling behind in life, you know? And on top of all of that, her parents also did not support her dreams of becoming an idol. So she felt a huge amount of pressure to finally debut so that she could prove them wrong and make them proud. 제가 빨리 빨리 성공해가지고 빨리 데뷔해서 아빠한테 아 이쪽 일은 아 정말 멋있는 일이라는 걸 아빠한테 보여드리고 싶어요. With so much on the line, Kara project obviously meant a lot to Sojin, perhaps even more so than the other contestants. And I can only imagine that coming in second must have been absolutely devastating. I mean, it would have felt like you were so close yet so far from your dreams. But to make things worse, in January of 2015, just a few months after the show, DSP then terminated Sojin's trainee contract. Now, before anyone goes hating on DSP, I just wanted to emphasize that DSP has every right to drop their trainees. They're not obliged to debut every single trainee. And considering how this happened right before April's debut, it seems likely that they let Sojin go because they felt like she just wouldn't fit April's cute and useful concept. So I kind of get where they're coming from. But from Sojin's perspective, it felt like her world had come crashing down. After all, she had just sacrificed six years of her social life, her free time, and her job opportunities all for a chance to debut. And now that things hadn't worked out, she felt like she had nothing to live for. And so, just one month after she had been dropped by DSP Media, Sojin made the tragic decision to jump to her death from the 10th floor of her apartment. But, but okay, surely the winner of Kara Project must have had a good outcome, right? After all, she won the show. Well, not really. In fact, she ended up being pretty damn unlucky. Okay, let's start off with some positives. Young Ji was generally well liked for her variety show skills and her signature laugh. And she also fit in perfectly with Kara. The problem was that she had joined Kara way too late. And I say this with all due respect because, I mean, it happens to every artist eventually. But basically, by the time Young Ji had joined, it was becoming clear that Kara was already past its prime. The group made their first comeback with Young Ji in August of 2014 with the song Mamma Mia. Despite being an absolute bop in my opinion, the song was only met with moderate success, peaking at number 10 on Gaon, which made it Kara's first title track since 2010 to not reach the top 3 on the charts. But their next comeback, Cupid, did even worse, peaking at number 15 on the charts and only selling 200,000 copies, which was an 80 to 90% drop from the 1 to 2 million copies the group was selling just a few years ago. It was obvious that Kara was kind of in decline, and frankly, the other members were also ready to move on, which was why as soon as their contracts expired in January of 2016, all three of them left DSP Media, effectively putting an end to Kara and to Youngji's idol career, which let's not forget only begun less than two years ago. Youngji must have felt so upset and disappointed over the disbandment. I mean, can you even imagine to work so hard to win a competition only for all of it to go down the drain? It must have honestly sucked. And indeed, Youngji later revealed that the disbandment had caused her to develop binge eating disorder due to all the stress. 정말 많이 많이 먹었어요. 막 배가 안 차는 거예요. 근데 제가 어디, 어떻게 했냐면 After Kara's disbandment, Youngji mostly focused on variety shows and acting. And it wasn't until December of 2016 when she finally came back into the music scene. This time to promote DSP's new group, Card, who, if you recall, consisted of fellow baby Kara member, Somin. 
I swear these baby Kara members keep crossing paths, am I right? But anyways, Youngji was featured in Card's first song, Oh Nana. Considering the fact that Youngji still had some hype at the time, it was obviously smart for DSP to use Youngji to promote Card. But at the same time, I can't be the only one who feels like it was pretty cruel that Youngji had to witness So Min debut in what was potentially a long-lasting group, while she herself never had that opportunity. Like, at that point, I would have felt like I was better off losing, you know? In 2017, Youngji tried her hand at music once again when she made her solo debut with the song Memory Club. Unfortunately, the song didn't get much attention, and Youngji has kind of faded out of the spotlight ever since. In fact, the last news articles I've seen about her were all about the fact that she got the virus in 2021. So yeah, definitely not the luckiest. As you can see, bad things happen to every single baby Kara member. Now, of course, I'm sure some people are gonna say the show was cursed or whatever, and fair enough. I think it's definitely rare for such bad luck to befall every single contestant on the same show. But I guess what stood out to me more was the fact that the prize that these contestants were vying so hard for, which in this case was becoming the fourth Kara member, actually ended up becoming more of a curse than a blessing. Which really just goes to show how unpredictable life can be. One moment you might think you've hit the jackpot, only to realize that all isn't as it seems. While other times you might face setback after setback, only to realize that other doors have opened and better opportunities await. It's really a pity that Sojin didn't see this and seemed to believe that her loss on Kara project would determine the outcome of the rest of her life. And you know, I just wonder if she would have made the same decision if she actually knew what happened to the other contestants after the show. So that concludes the story of Kara project. This is obviously a pretty tragic story, I guess, but I'm interested to know what you guys think. Out of all of the contestants, which contestant do you think had the best outcome? Or should I say the least bad outcome? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my Patreon if you'd like to watch My Teenage Girl with me. And last but not least, be sure to check out Soulbox and use code PLUPY15 for 15% off. I'll see you guys next time, hopefully for a happier video. <laughs>